passionate jazz pianist and middle school music teacher is caught in limbo after an accident and he's forced to take a closer look at his life. Sound cool? Good, because I'm going to talk about Soul from 2020. So I'm a fairly big Pixar fan, I guess you could say. Uh, I was there in the beginning for Toy Story, which to me is, you know, both a classic and a benchmark setter for animated films. I saw pretty much everything through WALL-E from 2008. Uh, I should at least probably check out Up from 2009 since uh, it's reportedly super, super good. And I haven't seen all the Spark shorts either, but I'm a massive, massive Kit Bull fan. Don't skip that one. I, I did a review of it uh, some time back. And Pixar, please, please turn that into a feature length. So for those not aware, Soul is uh, only just getting its theatrical release. It came out in 2020, but missed its chance to play in theaters. Remember 2020? Not, not good. And I'll admit, I wasn't even aware of this. Uh, I actually thought it was a new release. Uh, I guess it just slipped past me. I didn't see any trailers. I just knew that it was about a black jazz pianist, and that was enough to intrigue me. I'm not a huge Jamie Foxx fan, but uh, I mean, that's okay because he, he, he was great here. I mean, he really brought the character of Joe to life. And the animators, of course, deserve half the credit uh, because they really nailed it here. The expressiveness and detail along with the, the New York City setting, it was just all gorgeously done. And not knowing really what to expect, I was definitely, I guess you could say, caught off guard here. I mean, you have Joe teaching music to middle school students. Music is his life, particularly jazz, which he uh, was turned on to by his late father, who was also a jazz musician, and uh, would take Joe to jazz clubs in the city uh, when he was a little kid. He isn't content being a teacher. He wanted to be a career musician. Uh, one day while he's teaching students, of which half of them don't actually even want to be there, <laughs> remember middle school, uh, he gets a visit by the school principal. And she tells him that he's no longer a part-time teacher, he's now full-time, you know, with benefits and all that. And while this seems like great news, he's not exactly thrilled about it. This is where you learn about his kind of discontent with his life. Being a full-time teacher would just push him further into something that he's already not really happy with. Performing is where his heart is at, and he still hopes that he can someday achieve it. And then his phone rings, and it's one of his old students who's a drummer in a successful jazz band and offers Joe a chance to audition. He tells his mom about it, and she looks at it, you know, like any parent would. Uh, Joe needs financial stability. He's middle-aged, and she already watched his father struggle as a musician, and she doesn't want to watch it again. He understands this, but he's frustrated that, you know, she doesn't understand his love for music. I really love how this film touches on, you know, what it's like to have a passion for something and how most of us, you know, have to work a job we hate just to get by. And Joe feels like his life has mostly gone to waste because of this and he, you know, has not really let himself be happy. He makes the decision to go to the audition. It's, it's the break that he has wanted his entire life. At this point, I'm loving this. You know, everything is perfect so far. The characters are great. There's a lot of heart and as a fellow music obsessed dude, I, I loved, you know, how this uh, all centers around jazz. The flashback scene where Joe's dad takes him to a jazz club and explains that jazz is one of black people's greatest gifts to music uh, was very, very cool to me. But the direction that this went in really kind of caught me off guard because before he could get to the audition, uh, Joe falls into an open manhole while crossing the street and he's badly injured. He's basically, I think he's comatose. And while his body is in the hospital, his spirit or, or soul or whatever uh, is sent to a world where people go to kind of like in between life and death. I think there was a name for this place, but I, I don't remember. It's not really important anyways. And he is then tasked to mentor another soul from this like spirit world place. Uh, and she goes by the name 22, played by Tina Fey. She also does a really great job here. And she basically, you know, provides the comic relief. Uh, and I gotta say, I, I, I wasn't a huge fan of this, this spirit world. I really liked where the movie was heading up to this point, and I wanted to stay, you know, I wanted it to stay in that direction, but it, but it didn't. And you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining, that's okay. So as Joe and 22 go back to Earth, Joe gets trapped in a cat's body, and 22 is trapped in Joe's. And he has to teach her how to be him until they figure out a solution to this, uh, this debacle. Again, it's good, and it's funny, and, and full of heart, but I really honestly just wanted to see a continuation of where the movie was headed before Joe's accident. But that isn't what the movie is, and, and for what it is, I, I liked it a lot. 
I mean, it's a beautiful story that deals with things like taking the time to appreciate life, even if it isn't going as planned. And that's a message I can definitely get behind. I mean, I've been battling that type of thing my entire life, and I appreciated the reminder. Accepting things has never been easy for me, and I'm sure I'm not alone on that. Uh, I'm not sure I will ever, you know, get that completely figured out, but I'm also not going to give up. Maybe you feel the same way, and if so, I got your back, and I hope that you have mine. Let's try and make the most of it with the time that we have, right? I'm gonna give Soul an 8 out of 10. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it was a beautiful film regardless, with a lot of positive messages, uh, you know, a great performance from Jamie Foxx, and some amazing animation from Pixar. Cheers, guys.